It is finally time, as Bethesda and Xbox have officially confirmed attendance at E3 2021, and in the reveal, the teaser image to debut all of this, they actually are teasing Starfield. It's finally happening. We are now just a couple of weeks away from getting some real Starfield news, and of course, E3 itself. In this video, what I'm going to do is break down what you can expect, what we know, why this is the Starfield teaser, because I guess that's not inherently obvious to most people, but to just kick it off, let's go over Bethesda. Bethesda's tweet in general that you mentioned, in celebration of our partnership, we're proud to share the stage with Xbox during the Xbox Plus Bethesda Game Showcase on June 13th. We can't wait to present updates on the games you love, offer a few surprises, and welcome even more players into the Bethesda family. And then in a response, stay tuned on Bethesda.net and all of our social channels for updates throughout the show and beyond. Now we can see in the original tweet, as well as imagery, that it is going to be a joint showcase by Xbox and Bethesda. We technically heard this a couple of days ago from Matt Booty, who did kind of reveal this in an unrelated interview, but even further, we did get that official June 13th confirmation, and it will be taking place at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. This announcement was actually a little bit later than usual. Both Bethesda and Xbox typically reveal their E3 plans way ahead of time. Like Bethesda typically sends out their themed invites in March of the corresponding year, while E3 is in June. So this time, it only being a couple of weeks ahead was definitely interesting, but immediately, before we dive into what you can actually expect to see from these companies, and mostly Bethesda at E3, we had to take a look at this picture, because they are effectively confirming that Starfield will be at E3, or at least this is the most direct and obvious confirmation we could get. So in the top half, we clearly do have Halo Infinite, this will be one of the big titles coming from Microsoft and Xbox overall, but in the bottom half, you do have a planet, and a planet alone doesn't really mean Starfield is coming, but if you actually look at the planet, the land masses and water you could see in this planet is identical to the land masses and water you could see in the Starfield teaser trailer. And if you're kind of unsure, if you're like, I don't know if that's really true, just look at this little lake and then meandering river outside of it. It follows a very distinctive path and you clearly see that exact same path in this new E3 showcase teaser. So of course, that's big in its own right. We've been hearing a lot from a lot of people about how Starfield was going to be at E3, but now we're actually seeing something from Bethesda that does suggest that'll be true. Although one of the interesting aspects about this is, in any other year, if you knew that Starfield was going to be at E3, it was effectively confirmation that Starfield would be coming out in 2021. Because Bethesda, for basically a decade now, has been doing reveals at E3 and full releases at the end of that subsequent year. But now we are in a situation where a ton of insiders who actually do have a pretty accurate track record have said something to the contrary, where they've said, that no, in reality, we're just getting a teaser or a look at Starfield at E3, and it's not actually coming out until late 2022. Either way, this is definitely interesting, and it's definitely different for Bethesda. If you look at those past invites, and even just the theme of Bethesda's BE3 overall, it really doesn't have any relation to what's being shown there. 2017 had this playground theme, and then once you got into the showcase, it actually had a Starfield, so a lot of people thought we would see Starfield. That was before Fallout 76 was known about, so everyone thought Starfield was the next game. But of course, in reality, we didn't hear about Starfield at 2017's E3. We didn't hear about it until 2018, which had a completely different and unrelated theme. And what I'm saying here is typically in these little invites that Bethesda gives out, they're pretty ambiguous. But this time around, it is quite clear. They're telling everyone, hey, it's going to be Starfield. So that could lend a bit of credence to this being a bit of a different E3. In addition, this was recently found on their content delivery network. This labeled a Starfield Breaker image, seemingly being a bunch of drawings around the game. It's been this very confusing image in that these drawings were found to be from a bunch of artists and many of them actually predating the Starfield announce date. But to me, taking this all together, it almost does feel like we could be seeing more of a lighter view of Starfield. Not a full-on reveal, but something more like a, hey, here's what inspired us with this game. Here's a brief look at gameplay, like 30 seconds to a minute. And a reminder that the game is still a thing, but perhaps not that full deep dive we've seen in past years. Now, based on the timing of this, if Bethesda was going to follow that whole teaser stream, teaser trailer, then full reveal, or something meteor at E3, like they did with Fallout 76 and Fallout 4, June 1st is the date to keep in mind, as Tuesday, June 1st would in fact be the day where a teaser stream for Starfield does go live. This seems unlikely given everything I just talked about, and also given on that day ESO was having some kind of stream slash reveal event, but either way, nothing else, clearly Starfield will be at E3, but it's not the 
and only thing that's going to be at E3. As we know that, Bethesda Game Studios, although they are working on Starfield, and there's a big debate whether that's a 2021 game or a 2022 game, as many supposed insiders are claiming, but Bethesda is working on multiple games. We've actually seen this officially in some of their most recent job listings. We've seen some kind of unannounced project listed on a couple of Bethesda employee LinkedIn's, but just recently, Bethesda Game Studios put up a job listing for a server engineer, where it does list Bethesda Game Studios seeking a qualified server engineer to help create and improve systems for an unannounced title, that marking the first official confirmation of them working on something new. And of course, with it being a server engineer, being a multiplayer focused job, it definitely seems like it was something multiplayer. And actually, looking back at that listing now, they have removed that unannounced title listing. Now it just reads a server engineer to help create and improve systems, not specifically on an unannounced title, which is pretty interesting. There's a ton of theories as to what this could be. I think there's a lot of evidence for some kind of Fallout 4 special edition, a soft remaster of Fallout 4, perhaps with co-op. There's a lot of stars aligning, making it seem like that could be possible. You could check out my full video on the topic if you want to see all of the various reasons, but that could be a pretty cool surprise release for this year or perhaps in 2023 after Starfield. But either way, there's clearly something else in the works and we could hear some noise about that at this E3, especially if Starfield isn't coming out this year. But even further, whatever Bethesda Game Studios mobile game is. Todd Howard said a few years ago, they always want to be working on mobile titles from now on. We had Blades a couple of years ago when it seems like we are due for something. A lot of people have dubbed it Starfield Mobile. It could be some kind of tandem mobile game to go along with the full release. And I wouldn't be shocked if that could actually release during E3 for us to play and experience. And then of course we do have Fallout 76, which has quite a bit of an exciting things on the horizon. It is getting the Brotherhood of Steel Part 2 expansion, which is right now in testing on the public test server. So we know mostly what that is. There'll probably be some kind of teaser for that since coming in July. But we also are getting custom servers and a lot of people have been hopeful for mods coming to custom servers. I think whatever custom servers will entail, how much customizability it will be, we'll see a teaser of that at E3 also. It just seems like one of those big long requested features and a nice one to show off on stage. Like, hey, here are all the cool things you could do with our game in a couple of months. But that's not all because Bethesda does mention a couple of potential surprises at E3. And although I do suspect we'll see at least something surprising from BGS directly, we also do have three other titles that have kind of leaked or been talked about through the pipe work that I think could be something interesting. There have been some leaks around Arcane Studios working on a vampire game called Omen. We obviously know basically nothing about that, but that getting teased here would be pretty interesting. Wolfenstein 3 is another one that there's been some rumblings about from Machine Games, and a lot of people suspect it is currently in development. We could see a teaser on that. And then lastly, whatever the new Zenimax Online Studios IP is. ZOS is the developer behind the Elder Scrolls Online. They've had a phenomenal past couple of years, and even recently have been hiring and staffing a new studio in the US. They've been quite vocal that they're working on something new, so I think they're definitely a lock out of these three new or kind of surprising things we could see. I think we'll definitely hear from them at E3. But either way, for all three of those, Omen, Wolfenstein 3, and this new Zenimax Online Studios IP, although I think we could see something around them, I think it's still going to be early on. I don't expect any of those to be 2021 titles. I think they'll be 2022 or even later. We would just be getting an earlier look at whatever they're working on. Machine Games is also working on the Indiana Jones game, although it seems like that really just started development, so I don't really think we're going to be seeing or hearing much about that one. We do have an interesting or kind of curious situation with both the other half of Arcane Studios and Tango Gameworks, in that these two guys are working on Deathloop as well as Ghostwire Tokyo, respectively, except both of those are PlayStation exclusives, at least for the first year. That exclusivity deal was made before the whole Microsoft buyout of Bethesda, and I really doubt that Bethesda is going to be advertising PlayStation exclusives during Xbox's E3, so I think those games, although they might typically be at a Bethesda showcase, will just skip this year's E3. In particular, with Ghostwire Tokyo, it's been really quiet around that game for a while, so a lot of people are suspecting it may be having some difficulties or getting delayed into 2022, which would mark another delay for the title. Its software just dropped Doom Eternal last year. We've been steadily getting DLC around the game, so we could see more with this. I don't think it'll be anything massive. There are two new additions at Bethesda as of late with Roundhouse Studios and Alpha Dog Games. Both of these are much smaller studios, and they likely are right now in a support fashion, but they could be working on something new and likely at least partly working with 
Bethesda Game Studios on that mobile title, or at least that's what's suspected right now. And really, that's the core of Bethesda slash Zenimax. That's what a lot of the people are working on, what I think you can expect. I think we're due for a good presence or a big presence from Bethesda Game Studios particularly, but when it comes to the broader Xbox, there's a lot of predictions and speculation you can make, but a couple of the things that I think I'll be interested in and most of you on this channel will probably be interested in. I think Cyberpunk could make another appearance during the Xbox showcase they've been at the past couple. I could see them teasing some of the DLC coming this year, kind of showcasing how much better the game is, as well as that next-gen patch. Avowed is almost certainly going to be here, the next big project from Obsidian. We'll likely have some kind of gameplay trailer, and we don't even know a release date, so getting a release date for Avowed, or even just a release year, will be interesting. A lot of people are suspecting late 2022. Inzile, the original creators of Fallout, are also owned by Microsoft, and they're working on something new, some kind of first-person RPG, it seems. The studio director has described it as being something different and new, and there's even been some rumors it's a Fallout game, but with how early on it is, and even the director himself saying it's not going to be seen for a while, I don't think it'll make it to this E3, but that is something important and exciting to keep in mind. But with that said, I would say that's a pretty good roundup of what you can expect from Xbox and Bethesda at E3 2021. I think this is going to be an exciting one. I don't know if we'll actually get Starfield this year, I think it's definitely looking less likely, but at the very least, we are probably going to learn more about the title overall, and I think Bethesda in general might have quite a bit to show us. Hopefully you guys found this one informative, hopefully you enjoyed it as always, but with that said, I hope to see you all next time. Later.